you later. Um, so I've made a little program here, and uh, we're also going to talk about saving data today too, because when you um, when you record your data with LabVIEW, it's really important to think about how you're recording it, right? So if you have um, your data like in an Excel spreadsheet, you're probably only going to want to have um, so much data. Like for example, the DAT cards can take uh, data, like the little USB ones can take data at about 40,000 hertz, right? So after one second, if you took a data point as fast as it could go, you'd have 40,000 data points, right? So um, it's really important to think about how fast you want to take the data. Um, and also when you're saving the data, you want to think about what you're actually saving, right? Because in your data file, you're going to have two columns of data. You're going to have your, uh, whatever you're reading in. So like the, um, say your signal, you're going to digitize that as voltages. But then the other one could be like timestamp or something like this, okay? So if we look at our, uh, our program here, um, I'm actually going to, I'm going to start over with this, so I'll make a new VI, and I'll go here. So the first thing you want to do, uh, what I always do, is go and get a while loop. Hey, it's okay. So we're just doing a little uh, programming with LabVIEW. Okay. So uh, don't log into that one, because I'm actually logged into that one. But there's plenty of okay. space over here. Okay, so I'm going to make a while loop here. And then, um, first thing I want to do is I actually want to look at the a way to get the timestamp from the computer. So, if we go to the programming menu here, um, so let's go to programming, and then there's this timing menu. Okay, so if I go to this first one here and I click on it, this is tick count. So, um, so it returns the value of the milliseconds timer. Okay, and this is like the number of milliseconds since like 1979 or something. So, uh, which is not really a useful form for our data. But we're going to drag it over here, and then we're going to hit um, create uh, indicator. Okay, so we just made a, a really simple program here, and uh, so I'm going to drag this over here. And I'll try and click on it and make it bigger. Well, I can't do it, but... Um, so, if I look at this now, it shows me the number of milliseconds, right? Now, that's sort of useful, but in your data, you're not, you don't really care about the number of milliseconds since 1979, right? But this is a good way to get a timestamp from your data, okay? So... What we can do then is if we go back here, so we've got one value that just gives you the number of milliseconds. So what you can do is you can take another one of these, put it outside of your loop, and hit create uh, a numeric indicator. Okay. So if I go to the front panel here, this will be, um, I'll put outside of loop. Okay. So... Now, if I run my program here, you'll notice that this one is changing, but this other one that I put outside of the loop, it, uh, it doesn't change anymore, okay? That's because if you look at your program here, right, the first thing it does is it executes everything outside of the loop, okay? And then it goes in successively, like it'll go the farthest loop out, and then it works its way in towards the middle. So, what have I done then? I have... I've actually got the timestamp from when we actually started taking data, okay? So now if I want to know, well, what's the timestamp, how much time has passed since I actually ran the experiment, okay? So now what I can do is I can go back to my programming, and I can go under new, the numeric palette. So right here, there's a, a numeric, and I can go subtract, and I'll just put a subtraction operator here. Okay, so I'm going to move this down over here. And so if I look at my subtraction symbol here, if I click on that, I see it's x minus y, and then I get the output. Okay, so 
uh, the first value uh, should be the greatest value so I'm gonna hook up my wire here um, so I'm gonna hook that in okay and then I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna grab this I'm also gonna move this over here and I'm gonna click on this wire hopefully now since another good trick is um, since I can't get the the cursor to work the way I want it to I'm just gonna open the tools palette which by the way the tools palette is not under the tools menu it's under the view menu right so tools palette so I've got this here now I've just I'm, I'm in wire spool mode so I'm not at the mercy of the stupid lab view um, because it has uh, a lot of automated features but sometimes they don't always work so good so if I click here, I went, I'm back on automated, and I'm going to go here. I'm going to go create a uh, numeric indicator. Okay, so if I go to the front panel now, this will be uh, time since start of program. Okay, so I'm going to click here. Okay, so now I've actually created a way to tell how much time has passed since the program started. Okay. So that's really useful. So that's going to be one column of data that we're going to use. Okay. So now we have uh, one column of data, and we can actually get the the number of milliseconds that we have. Okay. So I'm going to hit stop. Right. So this is really useful for getting our timestamp. Now um, we also want to actually collect data on a signal usually. So I'm under my express menu, I'm going to go here to um, analog input and I'm going to grab a DAC assistant and then it's going to bring up the DAC assistant menu so hopefully um, everything's good so now I set up my DAC card here and it's just hooked to the signal generator which is right here so I'm going to go ahead and turn that on and I don't have a plug of course or it's been oh somebody unplugged it so make sure it's actually on, first of all. Okay, so I'm going to turn this to like 60 hertz. Actually, we can do uh, 60 hertz. Okay, so, and I'm going to go to analog input, and I'm going to go to voltage. And I've got two devices here, so it's important to know which device you have. There's one USB, so it says USB 609. So I'm going to pick the USB 609 one because I like these because I think they're nifty. Um, and I'm on analog input one. Uh, so I'm going to go, I'm going to pick this one, and then I'll go analog input one, and I'll go finish. Okay. So now uh, I think my uh, terminal configuration is okay. I'm just going to choose differential. Now, it's really important. Um, this is a little bit tricky, okay, because when you are in acquisition mode, okay, you can tell the DAC card to collect a thousand samples if you want, okay, or you can just have it collect one sample every time it goes through the loop. Now, if you have it collect a thousand samples, you're going to have to think about how you're going to process this data later. Okay, so if you have one iteration collects a thousand samples, right, then that means our timestamp is going to be off because it's only giving us one value every time it goes through the loop. So what we want to do is uh, we're going to do one sample on demand, and we're going to go, okay. And in the epic web series that I made, it's a four-part epic web series about programming with LabVIEW, and uh, you should all watch it because there's no class Monday. So I made these awesome videos for you to watch. We go into depth about uh, what actually happens if you uh, pick in samples. Um, if you say collect in samples, so it turns out you actually make an array of arrays, right? So you build an array and then each value in the array is actually another array. So if you think about how would I export this to a text file, it's like it's really really complicated and you just don't want to deal with this. So uh, but I actually do it in the web series, and then you can see what happens, and it's 
it's not it's not good. But so we just picked one sample on demand. That means we're gonna take one sample um, every time the loop the loop fires. Okay, and that's good because our timestamp is just gonna give us one value every time we go through the loop. So that's important. So I'm gonna click here on the DAC assistant, and I'm going to go create a numeric indicator and when you make your whenever you make a program the first thing you do if you have a DAC assistant just make the DAC assistant and put a numeric display on it and see if you actually get a voltage because a lot of times people will start going through and they'll get all the way and then they realize they can't even take voltage for some reason so the first thing you want to do just to say, make your life easier and save a lot of pain and torment later is just make a DAC assistant and read the voltage before you even save it or graph it or anything. So I'm going to go here and uh, yes, it looks like I am actually collecting data. And just to convince yourself farther, I like to actually unplug my DAC card and make sure that the signal disappears. Okay, just because. You never know what can happen, right? You don't know if you know somebody unplugged a cable or something, or. Um, but I've always found just as a good practice, just start simple, right? Make your program really simple at first, and then go to more comp, and then you can start adding things. Okay, so my voltage now is um, changing, and I'm getting a signal. I've also got a timestamp, so it's in milliseconds from. Uh, the time when I started the program, so that's pretty good. Um, now let's see what else I can do before we actually plot this, because ultimately I want to make a plot now. I want to show you how to actually plot the data, and then we're going to actually save it. And once you can do that, that's basically all the lab view you're going to need for the class, because every program that we do in the class is going to be some variation of this, where we collect some data and then we make an array and we save it. And you can build basically any kind of experiment you want in physics or engineering with this because you can, you can output voltages, you read a voltage, you get signals, and then you save your data. So if you can master this, you can basically do anything. You can build robots, you know, you can, Wesley was saying that you could put electrodes on your brain and then you could read your brain waves. You could, you could even, you could even monitor your brain waves and make a recording of that. So if you want to uh, do that, Wesley, that would be awesome. We can talk about that. Um, see what your brain waves work, look like with LabVIEW. That would be cool. Um, so uh, now, since I don't want my data to actually be in milliseconds, because I think it's just annoying to look at, OK? I'm actually going to go here and I'm going to get another subtraction thing and I'm going to drag it over here and I know that my timestamp is in milliseconds and I don't I don't want it in milliseconds okay so I'm going to go here to the bottom part and I'm going to go create a constant okay and I'm just going to enter in a thousand right and then I'm going to take my other thing here and if I can get a there's my wire tool. So I'm going to connect it right there. Is that divide? Do I want to? Oh. Oh, man. Good thing you guys are. Oh, wait. I didn't even connect my wire, actually. OK. Oh, so we don't, we don't want subtraction. We want divide. Man, you guys are so smart. <laughs> I'm glad you're here, because that, that just wouldn't have worked. You're right. So we want to actually divide, right? So I got my wire tool. Okay, I connected that one. So I'm going to divide this by a thousand. And okay, now you want to make sure that connects. So I'm going to delete. I'm going to delete that, and I'm going to move um, move this over here. And then I'm going to click on it, and I'm going to hook this up. Okay. So that's good. So that's going to be in seconds now, right? So yay, I made it in seconds. Cool. All right, so at this point, 
I'm going to stop my recording. If you don't have this, you should all...